Okay, my name is Mark Maggie and I am the District 6 Entomology Specialist from Fort Stockton and today I'm going to demonstrate how to properly mount Lepidoptera and I guess to get started the first thing you need to do is to have a uh, proper spreading board and these can be purchased uh, from commercial companies like BioQuip. They can also be made. There's lots of uh, internet websites that will give the specifications for properly constructing a spreading board. As you can see on edge, the, each side of the spreading board is angled so that in the center where the body goes, it's going to be uh, more narrow than at the edge where the board itself is wider. So that allows the wings to be positioned when they're dry a little bit higher up on the board. Next thing you'll need are insect pins and you can purchase these once again commercially. Uh, insect pins are obviously very important because they do not rust when they're inserted through the body of an insect. The insect contents do not rust the pin like they do ordinary pins and these pins come in a variety of sizes. The standard size that most entomologists use are number three insect pins. Uh, these insect pins range from 000, 0 all the way up to number 7 and the smaller numbers represent smaller or thinner sizes of insect pins. Uh, the number 7 insect pins are for extremely large specimens like large scarabs and rarely do we run into specimens large enough to use those number 7 pins. For most Lepidoptera, uh, number 3 pins are perfect. The other item that you will need in order to properly uh, position the insect on the pin at the proper height on the pin is a pinning block and this one is made out of acrylic. Uh, there are also wood blocks. This one is designed with uh, two holes, one at a higher position, one at a lower position. These holes are used to position the labels on the pin and then there's a hole on the side of this block that is used to position the insect at the proper height on the pin. So first thing you do is you pick up the insect on the sides of the thorax and on Lepidoptera if they are uh, recently collected they're going, their wings will be fairly limp. If you gently squeeze the sides of the thorax, you can see the, the wings will start to open. That will allow you to come in with the pin and insert into the center of the thorax. Try to center the pin uh, as close to the center of the thorax as possible. Push it all the way through till you can grasp the pin from underneath and then you can look at the insect from the front and from the side to see that the pin has been inserted straight. If it's crooked going through the insect, then it's difficult to get the wings properly mounted on the spreading board. Okay, now that you have the pin inserted through the insect's thorax uh, as straight as you can get it by visual examination, then grasp at the top of the pin, insert it into your pinning block from the bottom side and that will position the insect at the proper height on the pin. Once that's accomplished, then place the pin into your spreading board at the foam bottom into the center and you'll need to visually inspect the insect once again from the side and from the front or the back to make sure that the pin is going straight into the pinning uh, bottom. That way the insect wings will be positioned properly when you get ready to move them forward. Okay, now there's two ways you can mount or, or position the wings on uh, Lepidoptera. And the first way, and sometimes uh, others don't like to do this simply because by doing this and inserting the wing or inserting the pin into the wing, you're actually going to leave a small hole. 
If done properly, uh, it's barely noticeable and it is generally the easiest and quickest method for spreading Lepidoptera wings. And I will demonstrate that method. Uh, remember on all Lepidoptera, the costal vein is the strongest vein on the wing and you need to position the pin either in or slightly below the costal vein, fairly close to the apex of the thorax. Once that is done, then gently pull the wing forward, just part way, and insert the pin into the pinning board to hold that wing in place. Then repeat that on the other side pulling that wing slightly forward. Continue to move each side forward a little at a time until the bottom margin of the forewing is perpendicular to the body of the insect. That is the general rule of thumb when mounting Lepidoptera is that the bottom margin of the forewing is perpendicular to the thorax. Once you've accomplished that, then you can look at the apex of the hind wing uh, close to the upper margin, and you also will see some veins. Make sure that when you insert the pin through the wing, it's behind one of those veins. That will keep you from tearing the wing when you pull it forward or position it forward. Move it only slightly forward. Once you have the wings positioned the way that you like them, there's two different ways that you can go in terms of positioning those wings flat against the board so that they can dry properly. I like to use slide mounts or slides, glass slides, because they're heavy and they literally will sit on the wings and hold them flat against the board. But you can also use paper. And with paper, you'll need to place the paper on the board and actually insert pins through the paper to hold them flat against the board. Now once you've placed your glass strips or your paper on the wings to hold them down, make sure that the antennae are properly positioned. And you can do that using your insect pins so that they, the antennae, are as flat against the board as possible and out in front of the insect. That will keep you from breaking the antenna when you put your labels on later after the insect specimen is dried. Also, make sure that you um, position the abdomen so that it is as straight behind uh, the thorax as possible. And once that is done, you're finished. Okay, when you're inserting the butterfly uh, Lepidoptera into the mounting board, you push that specimen down into the groove far enough until the point where the uh, wings are actually inserted on the thorax are even, perfectly even, with the edge of the board. And also when you're positioning the abdomen, make sure that you position it not by pinning through the abdomen, by, but by supporting the abdomen or just moving the abdomen uh, by placing a pin either underneath of it or to the side of it and moving it from one edge to the other. Uh, finally, there's two different schools of thought concerning whether or not you should remove the pins after the pins are inserted into the wing and positioned. Uh, if you do pin through the uh, vein, there's a possibility that the hemolymph will dry on the pin, making it difficult to remove from the pin. So remember that if you're actually pinning through the costal vein. If you're not, if you're pinning behind it, then that won't be an issue, as in this case, and uh, you can leave those pins inserted until the, the specimen is completely dry. Okay, after the specimen is mounted and positioned on the board properly, 
Then the question is, how long do you leave it on the board uh, for the specimen to dry? And of course, that is going to be size dependent uh, on small, uh, uh, fragile butterflies like sulfurs and lysenids. Uh, that can be as little as two to three days. On the larger butterflies like the papillionids uh, and the saturnid moths, then you can be talking at least a minimum of seven days and maybe even 10. Uh, if you're not quite sure, longer is better uh, because if the mount is removed before the wings dry, then those wings will reposition and then you'll be stuck with a specimen that is not properly mounted. Well, I hope that's been uh, useful information for you. I know there's a lot of schools of thought concerned with spreading and mounting butterflies. This is the generally accepted method and uh, that's it.